There's a new anti-Ted Cruz ad being run in Texas, and um, it's pretty funny. Take a look. Somebody left something on my door the other day. Is it Ted Cruz, toughest Texas? <laughs> I mean, come on. If somebody called my wife a dog and said my daddy was in on the Kennedy assassination, I wouldn't be kissing their ass. You stick a finger in their chest and give them a few choice words. Or you drag their ass out by the woodshed and kick their ass, Ted. Come on, Ted. Political ad paid for by FTC PAC, not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. That ad is so Texas, and I love it. You know, we do uh, forget in the midst of everything else about this race happening in Texas. Um, and obviously on this show, we focus a lot on policy and the fact that uh, Ted Cruz is colossally corrupt and Beta O'Rourke is taking no corporate PAC money. Um, we forget that Cruz is also a cuck. That he had to genuflect at the altar of Daddy Trump when his donors told him to. And he did. He did. Remember at the RNC, he, uh, he made this whole big spectacle and he got up there and he was like, Vote your conscience, me, I'm Ted Cruz, me. Well, for those of you who are political junkies, you'll already know this, but vote your conscience is a code word for... You don't have to vote for any of the two major parties. You could vote for a third party. You can vote for um, anybody. You could do a write-in, whatever. You don't have to... Don't be uh, narrowed down to these two choices. That's what vote your conscience means. That's, that's what it's code speak for, if you will. And by the way, that's a sentiment. That's actually a perfectly reasonable sentiment. Very rare that Ted Cruz says something uh, that I agree with at all, but um, certainly a, a defensible position... But he did it specifically to spite Donald Trump. Well, there was reporting after the fact that uh, Ted Cruz went to some of the RNC after parties and big donors shut the door in his face. I forget who it was. Was it the Mercer family or was it um, Adelson or it was somebody, Coke, somebody like that, who had said, OK, look, we're we're uh, big time Republican donors. This guy is, um, you know, the our nominee, so we're going to back him. Cruz made the whole thing about, oh, vote your conscience, and they decided, well, you better shut the fuck up and hop on the Trump train and start backing him, or you're done, and we're not even going to support you when you're up for re-election. So Cruz genuflected the altar of Trump. There's that just legendarily sad picture of uh, Cruz on the phone for Trump, like, trying to push people to vote for Donald Trump, phone banking for Trump. Uh, and remember, it, the back and forth that these guys had during the debates and during the campaign season, yes, Trump tweeted a picture of um, Ted Cruz's wife and said, like, I wouldn't spill the beans on her. And that's, like, obviously euphemism for I wouldn't, like, fuck her. He, so Trump is retweeting like vicious attacks <laughs> on Ted Cruz's family, Ted Cruz's wife. Um, and Cruz ultimately was like, I don't care. I have no principles. I have no backbone. I will now support Trump and become one of his biggest cheerleaders. And that's what happened. And so now this guy is saying, oh, you're tough as Texas. You fucking folded like a cheap lawn chair the second you got a little bit of pressure from your donors. And that's Ted Cruz's career in a nutshell. And, you know, I've said it repeatedly. There's nothing redeeming about Ted Cruz. I need everybody to understand that. Because it's not even... Like, the thing about Trump is, even though he acts in terms of policy as a standard um, elitist Republican and establishment asshole, he does the tap dance of being populist. And, like, he actually is, despite what mainstream media will tell you, he actually is a good politician. Trump is. Because... He makes his case, he makes it aggressively, and it worked. And even right now, his approval rating is about what a regular president would be at this point in time, which is amazing given how terrible a job he's actually doing. Cruz, there's nothing there. Cruz, it's like he's an elitist, smarmy asshole, but he also sounds like an elitist, smarmy asshole, and he votes like an elitist, smarmy asshole, and there's nothing remotely populist about him, and he's just a terrible politician. I have no idea how he got elected in the first place. But Beto O'Rourke has an opportunity here to really knock him out. According to one poll, Beto was up a little bit, but most polls, to be fair, have Cruz still leading. Remember, this is Texas still. So, but that ad is, uh, I like that ad. And, and also, 
Cruz is now refusing to debate Beta O'Rourke again. They're, apparently, they were supposed to have another debate, and then Cruz backed out. You know, hey, I'm sensing a trend here. I'm just saying. And Coulter is refusing to debate me. Fascinating. Uh, there are others as well, by the way, who I'll talk about in the near future, um, who, who were like, mm, yeah, I'll pass on that one. But this is now a trend. The people who are like, why don't we just have a debate in the battle of ideas? We need to have a battle of ideas and open dialogue. That's what we need. We can't have these snowflakes running to their safe spaces. Afraid of dialogue. Okay, here we are. Here we are. Beto wants to talk to you, Ted. You're running for the hill. You're, you're a snowflake running for your safe space. And here I am. Here I am. Other right-wing commentators, here I am. Let's go. Let's talk. Let's have that battle of ideas. Oh, did I say battle of ideas? See, what had happened was the sun was in my eyes, and then there was the conflict with the schedule, and I had thought that it was going to be something else, and then what <laughs> Snowflakes. Go run to your safe space, but at least everybody now will know exactly what you are. 